Hi, I'm Sharon Sumner, community leader, speaker, blogger and consultant for all things Power Platform and business applications within Office 365. This series of videos is all about business productivity and in this series I'm going to look at getting you to value faster. How we can use the tools to bring you a little bit of business value that you can follow along with and create in your business immediately. So, let's get started. So today we're going to talk about contract automation. So it's a really big problem in businesses that we have many templates that we want to use for contracts and we have to fill in the blanks on these very long and complex documents with information from various different sources. So what we're looking at is a way to make that easier. So let's define the challenge. We need to easily and quickly produce a standard but long and complex document that needs to be personalized for each client, supplier, or every time we want to use it. We must use the correct and most up-to-date template. So typical uses for this are going to be for contracts, for supplier contracts, customer contracts, NDAs, even an employment contract. Uh, you could use this with statements of work, you could use this with purchase requisitions, purchase orders, even invoices if you wanted to. The technology that we're going to use today is we are going to use the Populate a Word document uh, or actually a popular word template premium connector within Power Automate. So we'll be creating a flow today. Uh, and we're going to deploy that via Teams with SharePoint in the back end. There's a really good reason for using Teams. I see it as the key productivity tool. With 20 million plus active users a day, Teams really has become the single pane of glass that we use for our daily lives with all levels of collaboration. So having a solution that surfaces within Teams is really fundamental. Okay. Let's hit the technology. So jumping straight into Microsoft Teams, you can see I've already created a contract team and we're going to jump straight into the files area in SharePoint associated with that team. We can't create document libraries here, so we've got to go up to the root of the team to be able to do that. So at the root, we're first going to create a document library to hold our templates. So templates are, are whatever it is we're going to use to be filled in. For this demo, I'll pop in a couple of templates, which I'll upload from disk, uh, a simple demo template, and the Word out of the box statement of work template, which is actually really good. And if I just show you these, so the simple document has just got a few fields in it and is really just to demonstrate the fact that anybody can start a document and can pop in values very, very easily to be completed. The way to manipulate these documents is to use the developer toolbar. If we pop the document in design mode, you'll see the text fields that I have on here and you can easily add other text fields. Now this is perhaps a longer task that you need to go away and do with your documents or maybe one you've already done. But this is the model that we need to use for the connector to be able to fill in the spaces. So we have to create those spaces. The very clever part about this solution is that Flow will pick up automatically the fields that we have to be able to be populated within this document template. It's very cool. So as you can see, this is the out of the box Word template and there's loads of fields to populate within here. And as you saw there, you just right click on any gray space and add in that developer toolbar if you don't already have it added. So we've got two documents to choose from. Uh, now we need to create a list and another document library. So the document library will be for the final uh, creation. So let's call that contracts because that's what will go in there of various types. And these will be our completed contracts if I can spell at all. Once we've created this document library, we can then create the list that the team will put the details into that are going to be the information that is populated into the document. So let's create a list uh, called contract details and we're going to need to add at least a couple of fields to be able to demonstrate that it's actually doing what we want it to do. So let's go for a single line of text for company name and another one for contract or contact. Let's go with contact name. I'm pretty sure I saw both of those fields in those documents, but we can put in wherever we like. Okay, so we have a list that users can use to add in new details. Perfect. So let's jump into Power Automate and get cracking with creating our flow. 
we're going to create a flow and we're going to make it an automated one. Uh, we'll skip this step and we will pick our own trigger. So we're looking for the SharePoint trigger that allows us to know when an item has been created or modified because we may use the flow later to add in the ability to pause when the contract is created so that it's not necessarily created immediately if we don't have all the information that we want. Uh, we're going to pick the contract team and the contract details list. So we're watching the contract details list for a creation or a change event. So we are going to pick the populate a Microsoft Word template premium connector and we're going to point that at our contract team and the document library where we put our template. So this is going to pick up the template that we pick. Now here is where the magic happens. So if we point at either of our documents, it automatically goes off and gets all of the values for that document from the developer pane that we've already seen. If I switch to the simple document, you'll see, oh, well, it's much more simple. So let's use the simple one, just an example, to create the document for you. So let's bung in a couple of the attributes that we went and defined. It doesn't really matter where. And we do need a type, so let's throw in title because I think we only had a couple of fields. So then we're going to add the step to actually create the document. So while we have populated a template, that's effectively still in memory. So we need to create the Word document. And I always forget what this one's called. Um, I think it's called create file. Uh, and we're looking specifically for the SharePoint one, not the OneDrive one. So let's pick the SharePoint one and point it to our contract team and the folder path that we want that to go into so because it's a teams we want to go directly into contracts and we now have the ability to name the file so ideally we're going to put an attribute in of the file um, and I'll show you a little tip and trick here so no matter what I put here after this attribute it seems that this bit is going to get deleted so it's really something to watch out for it doesn't matter what I do, I always seem to get that part deleted. I'll show you in a second. First of all, let's just add the file content, which is from the values that we've got in our hand. If we rename this item here to something bespoke to us, we'll be able to recognize in the dynamic content that it's definitely ours. So we're gonna bring that in and then we're gonna save the flow. We're gonna save it in a couple of places. We're gonna rename it just to make sure that it's something a little bit more obvious for us. Uh, so we're creating a contract from a template. Uh, we can save it again. Uh, and yet still, when we go back to the main menu, not only is it going to say we're going to throw your thing in the bin, which we've already saved, but when we come back in and we look at the company name part here, you can see it's disappeared. So I'm having to put that back in again. So uh, the amount of times I've done this where you create a file that has no file extension. Second time around, if we come back in, you'll notice that it's still there. I don't know why it happens. I guess it's a little bug. But knowing that it happens might save you some time banging your head on the wall. We have uh, when an item is created or modified, create the document from the template and then create as a file specifically called by the company name and deploy that into our environment for us. Let's go and test this out. So we're going to jump back to the list. We're going to put some contract details in. Let's put in my test. Very uniquely, let's have Sharon's flowers. I can see some flowers. <laughs> and we'll put myself, myself, and we'll put me in as the contact name. There we are. Those are our details. So now when we jump back to the flow, we should see uh, the flow begin to run. We did an on create or edit. So this should automatically trigger the flow. Here it is. And when we go into there, we can see we have lots of green ticks so that we know that the process ran without hitch. There's all our values. And the file was created with an extension, which is awesome. So let's just go back and confirm that that did happen in the contracts library. There's our document. Let's have a look to make sure that our document has in fact taken our values through. We'll open that in the Word app. And there we are. Perfect. So we now have the solution where we can put the details in one list and from a template that we've pointed to, we can create the document using the details that we've put in that list. So now we want to add a little bit more to the solution. Let's go back to our contract details and add in a couple more columns. First of all, let's put in a choice field to say which kind of document that we want to create. Now, in, in our templates, we have two, but let's work with that. Obviously, you can make this as complex as you want to make this. So we have the simple document and we have the statement of work. So we're just going to have that as a simple choice field. 
Um, the other thing that we're going to add is the ability to say don't create this right now or do create this right now just in case you don't want to create right off the bat. So we're going to default that to no and assume that you don't have enough details to create the document unless you specifically tick that to yes for us. Okay, so now we need to go and make some changes to the flow. So if we jump back in and edit. Now what we need to do is add this in a, in a condition. We're going to do this here above these two actions because we're actually going to reuse them. So what we need to do is pull in a condition statement. here in the control and what we're going to say is the first thing to test for is whether or not we are supposed to be generating the document so uh, we've got create now if create now is true which is will be the yes value then we will be in this yes block over this side okay so what we're going to do in here is we are going to put in yet another condition because now we're going to say okay we're going to create the document but what type is it so looking at the document type column and specifically the value in the document type, we want to know if the value is equal to one of the options. So if we say, is it equal to simple? Because those are the, the statements we have down the bottom here. So we'll move these into the yes. If it's equal to simple, then we're going to do what we were doing already. If it's no, then we can assume that it's a statement of work. Now, one of the nice things about Flow of late is that we can copy to clipboard. So we can copy these two to the clipboard and then we can simply paste them on the other side from my clipboard, which is under choose an action under the clipboard. We do need to do a little bit of fix up on these where we need to make sure that we're picking the right document. So here you can see I've created uh, the the word template I've renamed to create statement of work so that I can see that I'm definitely picking the right one for this create file to instance. Okay, so that's us with everything in place. We're going to save this flow and jump back to the list item. And in here, we're going to make some changes. So if we edit this item and we say it's going to be a statement of work, but we've now clicked it to yes. So this will be an on change event and we can jump straight back to flow to be able to see this, or oh sorry, power automate, to be able to see this flow run. Now don't forget, it can take up to 60 seconds for the flow to actually initiate and then probably a further 60 seconds to run. So um, here it is, suddenly appeared. And if we click through to that, we'll be able to see that the branch that that condition has gone down. So yes, we are allowed to create the document and here we have ticks down the create statement of work side of things. So if we now look, we can see that we have a contract. We need to refresh this list and we have a statement of work. So let's have a quick peek to make sure that we actually got the values we were expecting in that statement of work. Now, bear in mind, this one had an awful lot of places where it could put values. So let's see if we can find it by using search. So we'll search for Sharon. There I am. OK, this is where we inserted the name. And I think I was Sharon's flowers. So an S on here. Perfect. And you can see that it's populated in a couple of places. I don't know what those what the naming convention of that document was, but that's what we intended to do. Happy days. OK, if we want to do a couple more tests on this, what we can do is we can jump back in and put in another test item. This one is going to be not ready and still needing completion. So even though we're going to pick the simple document type, we're going to leave create now to no and we're going to hit save. And this is just to demonstrate that the flow will in fact behave. So again, we've got 60 seconds out before that's going to appear. But here it is by the magic of video. And we can see that it was false and therefore it didn't go and execute any further within the flow. So we weren't allowed to generate a document. We go back to the contracts list and you'll see that no document was created. If we were to change this as an edit and move that to yes, then you're going to see that the workflow will kick in. There it is running. And we can see the condition was passed as true. And we've gone this time down the simple document route. So if we jump back into the contracts list, we should now see a not ready 
contract. Perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. If we open this up, we can have a look at the simple format just to check that everything is where it should be. I'm not ready to complete this. Perfect. Okay. So if we jump back to the Teams environment, we can now bring this back into the single pane of glass for the contracts team to be able to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the document library that has in it the contracts, uh, which I believe was called contracts. And on reflection, I'm probably doing this backwards because ideally first you would have the contract details and then the completed contracts, but hey, that's just showing you how it works. So we have completed contracts available as a top tab. And let's also add in the, doc the list to be able to add those contract details in. Now we don't need the templates library to be here unless we're a very open structure and we're all editing the templates, but the templates document library could be in that SharePoint environment. You could restrict the permissions if you wanted to so that only certain people can edit those templates just to manage the template um, legality and, and version control. So within the Teams environment, we are now acting as a contract team member. We're on the contract details tab and we're adding a new item from Sharon's new co, uh, yet again with me as the details. Uh, we're gonna pick a document type of statement of work and we're gonna say, yes, crack on, give us that document. So here it is as a request in our contract details list. And we can see that that's been requested to be created now. If we jump back to completed contracts as a window, so there's no looking under the hood for these users. This is just the end user being able to use the functionality. We're looking for a document called Sharon's new company to magically arrive here. Now, because we are devs, we can nip back into the flow and just make sure that that has run and that it's gonna behave exactly as we'd expect it to. If we just hit refresh here, again, we're just experiencing that small delay. It looks like it already has run, so let's refresh and see if that document appears. Oh, uh, nope, there it is. Like I say, small delay. And you can see in here, we've caught the running conditions. So it's currently executing those conditions and we can watch that happen live. If we just give it a moment, we can see then it executes. Uh, conditions successfully took us down the statement of work route. So as the user back to Teams, all they had to do was go and make a coffee and there it is, Sharon's new contract, company contract, all created for them within those beautiful tabs. And again, we can change the order of these just by drag and drop. And now we have some beautiful functionality for those teams to be able to very easily create complex documents with lots of fields that can be replaced. And this can be as big or as small a solution as you want it to be. But basically we just saved many hours of find the right template, ensure it's the right template, fill in all the contract details uh, that we have on file somewhere, uh, make sure those details are correct and get that document published. Hopefully this has been really helpful. Um, this is part one really of a two phase scenario. We're gonna come back to the contracts team because we've got more development work we can do there for them. In my experience, once a contract is created, getting it to actually sign off can mean that it changes entirely. So having got to a Word document, the next video will have a look at what happens when the PDF comes back fully signed by both parties and we then want to create the ability to track the expiry of those documents. So I will see you in part two and thanks for watching.